AFL Victoria have been working for the last 12 months in conjunction with our key stakeholders to develop a corporate social responsibility strategy and to help address some of the key social issues football clubs are faced with every day. We know football can play a powerful role in promoting and supporting social causes and in AFL Victoria, the board, our management and executive and also our key stakeholders are embracing that role. Off the back of this strategy, we are really pleased to announce today several new partnerships with some fantastic organisations who will help us all deliver statewide themed rounds in 2018 across our competitions and also across community competitions. After consulting our stakeholders, we have selected four key areas to support through our CSR strategy. Mental health, domestic violence against women, motor neuron disease and problem gambling. And I'm pleased to take the opportunity to announce AFL Victoria will be partnering with Beyond Blue, the White Ribbon Foundation, Fight M&D, as well as continuing our long-term partnership with the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation. Um, at a fundamental level, White Ribbon's a symbol about men standing up uh, against domestic violence and violence against women. Um, so we run programs throughout the whole community, including in schools, workplaces, recognising that domestic violence is something that uh, impacts on the whole community. One in three women will experience violence in their lifetime. Um, and we encourage men in the community to stand up to create a male culture that doesn't condone and speaks out against violence. Yeah, I had no idea what motor neuron disease was until a few years ago when my dad, Neil Danher, was diagnosed. So it was brand new to me and we sort of came together as vitamin D and we're all about building awareness and we know the power of the football community. So you won, we went to everyone at the MCG with Big Freeze and had a concept of raising $250,000 and we're amazed by walking away with over $2 million. So it's a credit to the Victorian public that got behind us as well as the Australian public. So we've uh, come up with a new concept, uh, Soccer to M&D, which is happening the week after the Big Freeze, and it's the way that the local community, regional communities can get involved in the Big Freeze campaign by pulling on the socks and uh, raising awareness and funds for motor neuron disease. So we're really excited to bring this new concept and to continue the fight against motor neuron. Look, love the game is really important to us at the foundation because it is all about loving the game and not the odds. And uh, this is an important message for us because the foundation really does focus on harm from gambling. That's not to suggest that um, anyone who gambles is going to experience harm, but we really want people to be aware of the sorts of harms that can come from gambling and to really focus on loving the game uh, and not the odds. Key message. Yeah, so obviously um, Hawthorne's had a long standing relationship, probably stems down from Jeff Kennett um, many years ago, over 10 years now. I think for us, uh, we spoke about before with MND, the, the platform that the football club has to be able to reach so many people um, on, a, on a broad level is, is why sort of Hawthorne got involved. But I guess at more of a, a personal level, for me, I was touched um, by the loss of a friend uh, to uh, anxiety and depression. And, um, and some family members, again, closer to me. So that was my personal um, motivation to get involved. And, and, and the work we do day to day is, is probably um, through school programs. We've got one that Hawthorne's in partnership with uh, Beyond Blue looking after me um, and, and things like that, which really just look to, uh, to sort of band together wellness, whether that be physical and mental and sort of the being I guess healthy is, is both and that's why we're trying to yeah, bring that into schools. How did you find the, the competition going from TSC Cup girls and it's an inaugural competition to then playing in the big league if you like in the AFLW, how did you find the transition? Um, well it's definitely a big jump to sort of playing with girls around your age, even younger, um, younger and older and then um, making that big leap into playing with women professionally. So. The transition was difficult, but then again, you're, you're training with them and you're learning to, to adapt to those type, that type of environment. But I think if I wasn't in the TAC Cup comp and with Colder Cannons for those three or four years that I was, I don't think I would have um, had the skill level that I did and wasn't, wouldn't have been able to sort of develop like I did myself and a few of the other girls I got drafted as well. So I think, yeah, it was, it was pretty, the transition was tough, but I think, again, because of that pathway and all those sort of... Um, clubs that you're, you're exposed to, I think because of that, um, you're able to um, learn to adapt quite quickly. What did you find Thursday night? Yeah, um, the build up on the day was, I was pretty nervous and it, yeah, it was a long day I guess in the preparation, but um, yeah, I got, I got the, to the ground and walked out on the ground a bit before the game started because I knew it was going to be a massive crowd, so I tried to prepare myself a bit for it and yeah, I guess I went out there and I absorbed it and embraced all the, the, the roar and the, 
and yeah, but um, once you get out of there, it's just another game. So yeah, I love it. So you guys are always competitive and know that they'll be looking for success straight away. How important is it for you to make sure that, regardless of how it goes, that you are competitive on the field and that everyone's going in the right direction? Because it's not just about the winning side, it's about developing, making this league unbelievable and, and so strong. Yeah, you couldn't have said it any better than that. I mean, um, you know, everyone loves to win, who doesn't? Uh, but I guess we're at that stage now where uh, what we're trying to do is develop players to be the best they can and um, make the AFLW bigger, uh, better. Um, and so for me, it's more about not how many goals we kick on the scoreboard and how many games we win, about how many girls we actually push through to the AFLW, how many um, women here about our club and want to come play for us. Um, so creating that great culture and that support network and a safe environment for women to come down and you know develop their skills. Um, I think the, the obvious thing is we've, we've gone into our first year as Stand Alliance. So um, just the, the joys, I suppose, of playing with the 22 blokes who are all, all where we listed and, and we get the opportunity to, if we have a bad loss or a good win and, and we can all get together on the Monday night, go through it together and learn together and, and we, we had a great relationship with North and, and really enjoyed our times there but the elephant in the room is there's difficulties around that, that bringing the two groups together every year um, and this year we haven't had so much of that difficulty, it's been more about trying to improve the, the on-field side of stuff. The Peter Jackson VFL, get involved. Swiss Wellness VFL Women's, get involved. The Peter Jackson VFL, get involved. The Swiss Wellness VFL Women's, get involved.